Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Virtue's Brand of Wrestling, also known as Virtue Advice, right here on the TheBigVitoBrand.com and also over on WrestlingWithWrestling.com with Andre Corbeil. I am Virtue being joined again by Robbie Vice. What's up? Hey, Virtue. Um, nothing. It's been an it was a it was a fun week of wrestling with a with an interesting debut. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, I know you have a lot that you kind of want to go over, so let's just jump right into it. It's been every other week since I've been doing these now. I'm getting back into it, so I'm kind of excited to have a good conversation today. Well, here we go. And let's talk about Rusev first. You know, Miro, right? Because he's never going to be able to use Rusev as if mm -hmm. he's not in WWE. And, you know, he's trying to get in the podcast stuff. I'm sure he's got good money for his run in WWE, and he's married to Lana. She's still working there. She's got money. So he's good. He's well off. He, and they can get appearance dates and indie dates but he's doing this whole thing i'm out of the wrestling business i'm gonna yeah. retire they never what's your take here like i think what they do somebody like him too they want people to believe that he'll he'll go into his other ventures and make people believe he's done so when he does show up in aew it'll be more maybe they'll keep it top secret and that'll be a huge surprise now we actually had a little bit of a debut that was kind of a sort of surprise but i don't know it's like you always know when people leave WWE, you're expecting them to pop up elsewhere. So is Rusev Miro seriously going to do this, or is it a wrestler thing to, to peak his value for later? So this is what I think. This is my logical my logical brain that's going here. Uh, he's obviously going to be a wrestler again because the guy is super jacked and he's talented. Um, I think he had COVID, so he may actually have some some recovery to do um, you know, with his wind capacity. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about his health, but so that may take some time. And in the meantime, I think he's, uh, he's sitting pretty on some money and he's just having fun playing video games on Twitch. So I think he's going to do this for a while. And I think you're going to see him show up at some big pay-per-view and, uh, he could possibly be what the leader of the dark order couldn't be. And that's entertaining and fun to watch. So are you, if if and when he does come back to wrestling, are you picking AEW based on the pattern? We're seeing, although Impact is getting a lot Impact? of performers. Yeah, too. yeah, they they got some good stuff going on there. You know, um, but where do you think he would go? I like, think he would go to AEW because I think he fits exactly kind of what they are. He could be kind of like a modern Vader over there because no one's really big. You know what I mean? Everyone, everyone is like medium sized. They do. You have a couple of freaks in nature, like Cage. Um, and I think I saw some guy on AEW Dark. He's like name was like Bruce Power on the Indies or something like that. But he was like a gigantic, gigantic behemoth. I've of a never man. watched Dark yet. Through all oh. like eight months, not once. Yes, yeah. I, I actually flipped through it the other day because you could watch it on YouTube. So you just uh, flash forward through it. Um, but yeah, so but I, I think he's a very athletic, uh, very agile big man. And he would work the style that a lot of those guys work. Um, but he could also be that power guy because I don't think he was quite big enough in WWE for Vince to take him seriously as a big power guy. But in AEW, it makes absolute sense that he does. And the cool thing is, is I don't even think he'll need a manager. I'm sure Lana will maybe join him someday. But, you know, he's he's pretty good on the mic. He's got a lot of personality. If you if you watch some of his stuff, he's funny. So I think AEW would be a good fit for him. And I, I think he's going to hold out until fans are back in the arenas because I don't think he wants a repeat of what happened to Matt Hardy. Dude, how does like Vince McMahon like he, he had that Russian sympathizer gimmick from Bulgaria or whatever? Yeah early in his career uh, on the main roster and was undefeated and they jobbed him out to scene. He came out in a tank. We know the whole story. Yeah. Um, you know, you didn't think he could recover after that, but then the Rusev day stuff got over and he was selling t-shirts and they still didn't do anything with him. Isn't that nuts now that twice Vince dropped the ball, even pushing a guy, even if his main event runs would have only been like half of a year. So you think this is one of these instances that, what, now that he's gone from WWE, whether he's retired or he does go to AEW and he does something, look what Drew McIntyre did. Will Vince then yeah. or somebody in Vince's bubble point back to Rusev or Miro, and he could go back there at some point. The reason why I want to bring that up is because I feel he's at a Drew McIntyre level, and Drew came back and is the champion now. So that's why you can like never say never. Is there a possibility down the road Vince's eyes open up or Stephanie's and triple whoever could influence him. And he goes back there. I don't see him being back there 
in Vince's professional lifetime. I mean, obviously, I, I hope Vince McMahon lives to be 150 years old because I think he has a lot to offer, even though not everyone – I don't agree with everything he does, but as a human being, I, I wish him health. But um, his professional career, we're probably in the, the last few years of Vince McMahon in charge and making calls. Um, I don't think he'll be back there in a Vince McMahon era, but I think – Absolutely, he could be back there uh, with Triple H or whoever is in charge after that. I, I think the whole WWE landscape is going to change when Vince is gone. I think you're going to see – it's not going to be NXT because that's – you know no matter what anyone thinks, that's still a very niche product. It's not for the mainstream. But I think you'll see a, a version of NXT that is made for the masses, and I think it will be a better product. And I think guys like Rusev, again, the guy is just oozing talent. I think he'll find work there, but it's going to be a few years. To Vince's credit, he's always let wrestlers go for various reasons, whether yeah. they just didn't draw, um, he had nothing or he didn't want to pay him, drug like scandals. Hart. Over the years, and a lot have come came back and had big matches. Mm -hmm. I know in today's era, it's the wrestler having to want to come back is the big deal. Like, you know, well, no, well, you're going to do the same thing with me again. No. But that's why I never say never, because it always feels like Vince lets people go so he can bring them back later as a shock value. But back then... They did it, right? They came back. Will they? Yeah. Maybe they're so upset with how they were booked these days, they'll never go back. Like, you know, um, the revival, they're never going to go back. You know? Yeah, they will. Really? Yeah. So you think, you think they'll go back? Dude, Bret Hart went back. So there you go. I'm already convincing you that Vince McMahon finds ways to bring back. Dude, if CM Punk ever came back, that would open the door to anybody. I mean, we say that with Warrior. He, you know, even though it was only the Hall of Fame, Dude, even Hogan when like, he left, and Hogan yeah. after the steroid trial, and then Hogan going to WCW, that was a big deal. That was a big trust deal with Vince. But when it comes down to it, if Vince is going to make the decision, his creative ideas may be awful, but he will always do what's best for business. Yep. And then Jericho's another guy. I'd like to see what happens because you know he's saying right now he'll never yep. go back, but it's, he's he's <laughs> against them right now. He's going to say that. Right. Okay. So we're going to AEW like we do. And so the first thing that happened is, I don't even know her name. I think it was Cameron in WWE. She was one of the Funkadactyls with Naomi. So she yeah. debuts. I want to say it was in uh, Vicky Guerrero's bubble with... Uh, was but, she the girl not... that pinned the girl that was laying on her stomach or tried to with that leg yeah, drop? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so big get right for AEW. But here's the pattern. Former WWE talent. Okay. Or I don't know how to performer. Um, so what do you think there? And of course, also Matt Cardona, which Zack Ryder, but you know, ooh, can't ooh. use it. Uh, and you know, he's coming in there looking jacked, like oh my God. super, super tan. And he looks like he's ready to get right into the main event title, you know, or main event scene for the first time in his career. So what's your take here with AEW continuing to get WWE talent? And of course, is Zack Ryder going to make any noise? Because it's like, who really has besides Jericho and Moxley? Yeah. Um, the the women's division needs work. I think anybody that you get, you know, and again, I made fun of her because, so if, if you guys don't know, she basically did a leg drop to the back of somebody and then laid on her back with the wrestler facing down on the mat and yelled at the ref until she realized she was messed up and did it. Boobs but on the shoulders. It was the boobs, boobs of the mat match. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Boobs. Right. But I, I think any veteran talent that's gone through the WWE system in the women's division is an asset to AEW who has a very lacking women's division. Like, I know they brought that a bat in. Is that is that her name? The the abyss, the female abyss, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's like she's like she evil, sucks like, in the body, ring. But some, like, yeah, the ring or some weird the grudge type thing. Yeah. It's like actually a combination. That's a good way to explain it. But I. I think the gimmick is neat. I don't. I, I don't really get it in the ring. I don't know. It, maybe it's just my old man cynical stuff. But look, everyone's got to come from somewhere. Just because someone comes from WWE doesn't mean they don't have talent. And I, I think it's it's even less than when TNA did it. Because when TNA did it, it was like they had all the indies, Ring of Honor. They had a lot of places to choose from, but they kept bringing exclusively WWE guys back. Dude, with NXT UK, USA, Raw, SmackDown. The, all the other shows they have, the live shows, WWE has a, I mean, if you actually go look at their entire roster, it's insane. So I think most people are going to be coming from WWE. And you got to understand, man, two years ago, AEW did not exist. So everyone wanted to go to WWE to make the money. 
Now, here's what I, this is what the type of stuff that intrigues me. Cardona's over there now, right? Uh-huh. Helping is he Cody, best whatever. friends with Cody? Well, they, like, whatever he's friends? helping, he's in that bubble. I could see them, him turning on Cody and wanting that title at some point. But however that works out. And then you got his wife or fiance, Chelsea Green, tweeting pictures. I'm so proud of you, baby. And she's employed by WWE and NXT. So Job City, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with her. Because this is where WWE's child is. Now, I don't know if it's so much in NXT as it is with the main roster stuff, like with McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. They really like to hold grudges. I still to this day think Seth Rollins was told to throw up because they were making fun of Becky being pregnant in morning sickness. And he got her pregnant. That was great. That's just people that have worked in that atmosphere like Vince Russo have said they wouldn't put it past the childish ways of their management to do ribs and shit like that. So I'm just wondering, you think this is going to affect Chelsea Green? Now, I know Adam Cole is also, you know, uh, I think if fiance That's with Adam Baker, Cole. But, like, yeah, you know, Britt Baker's actually been in the crowd in NXT. So it's yeah. it's just weird. I, it might not be NXT, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, William Ray, whoever's in charge down there, they might not do those silly ribs. But can is it? Is it I don't think they do. The equation. That's how they were too. They were friends, you know, with Hall and Nash, and uh, I'm sure if there was social media, you know, if there was social media back back in the '90s, that that the Click would have had all their stupid Instagram pictures up with all of them in it, um, and it, pro- it probably would have ruined the attitude era. To be honest with you, um, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on that. But we'll see. Now, speaking yeah. of Cody, so he can't compete for the AEW title because he lost to MJF. By the way, I love that promo with MGF. I actually did see that. Oh, yeah. Like the podium. Be like you're trying to give him Trump or something. But yeah. The blue yeah. suit, the red tie. But nonetheless, they made this TNT title, which is basically a television title. And I thought Lance Archer should have won it. And maybe Cody should have chased him to win it down the road. Nope, they put it on Cody. And now Cody just can't lose. He's getting that, you know. And that's okay. But they're bringing in indie darlings. You know, and it's like. Somebody on Twitter said, why, why wouldn't AEW talent be going for that title? Why did people outside the company want to come and get that title? It's a TV title on that network that your show is on. Where, where, and, and I know some of the, his opponents have been the main roster people, but lately yeah. it's these indie people because it's like that's all they want to do is pop the indie crowd, the indie marks. So yeah. there's problems here with this. As Cody, This could make Cody a big villain because everybody loves the indie darlings. Cody's going over and over. And all these people that fan, these diehard fans think should be contracted with AEW. So where is the end game for this with Cody? And maybe is that Cardona taking this title? Are they going to just keep it on Cody and just see where he goes? If the fans turn on him, they'll make him heal. If they just love him because he's Cody, they'll put a statue outside of whatever building they do that show at. Something place. What? Daly's place? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, something just doesn't seem right. Like, it's adding up here. And what do you Cody's think? going to be the world champion of TNA. Or, oh, oh my God. They're, people aren't going to like that at all, are they? Uh, he, he is going to be the champion. Andre of the, likes that, TNA. So, that's Andre. True. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, so, this is, I think, what's going to happen. Uh, obviously, Cody keeps beating these indie darlings. And, and he's being... He's not being his normal sportsman-like self in the ring. There's little subtle things that he keeps doing, it, and it looks like they're going towards evil Cody at some point, which I think is genius because what I think that allows that to do is it's going to – Cody's going to be on a winning streak, and I think he's going to lose his title clean, and I think he's just going to kind of snap, and he's going to get power hungry, and something's going to happen, and he's going to be like, you know what? I'm the vice president of this company. I don't, I don't give a damn what any of you think. You know what? I said I would never go for the title, but I'm going to. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. And you instantly almost have a wrestler version of Vince McMahon in 1996-97. And that possibly could be really big. They just they really need someone to chase that. I don't think it's Moxley. I don't know if it's anyone they really have yet. Maybe Hangman by that point if he can get over and Omega turns heel and he could be like a stooge for Cody because I just think he's useless right now anyway. Um, that could be an interesting way they, they go about that. Well, and to protect the fact that MJF beat Cody and Cody can never compete for that big title again, they almost have to make it where MJF allows him to do it. So I would almost think that, I don't know how that would happen, but they wouldn't want to 
like make MJF look silly and just like, so here's what I think could happen. Cody's going to continue to win, defend this title, just win, 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 win to where he beats everybody except the world champion. And then, like you said, he could use the VP power and try to get it in himself. But this is where I think he won't do that. This will be the TV debut of Tony Khan putting his, because he's a mark. You know yeah. he wants to be as authority figure on TV. And that's where this is going to, that's where Cody will somehow threaten to hold the TNT title hostage or do something. And Tony Khan's like, I don't want to do this. MJF, I owe you a big one, but I'm got, I got to allow Cody to have a title shot again and take that restriction off because he's ruining my show. Something weird like that. And Tony Khan is going to be on TV. I'm calling it now. That's what I think is going to happen. So I like that. And if we're going to be uh, armchair book in here for a second, I, I would really, really, Ready. right. I would like to see it in a situation where MJF is basically like, they tell him, maybe Tony Khan would be like, I leave it. This is up to MJF. I can't do this. But and then MJF may make Cody do something terrible to see how bad he was. It may be like like maybe Zach who Cardin or whatever is laying there bleeding in the ring and Cody goes out to help him. MJF comes out with a mic and with a chair and says, beat the shit out of your best friend and, and you can have your title shot. Otherwise, never again. And Cody's just going to you know, maybe have that second hesitation and then he's just gonna, I'm sorry, and just beat the shit out of, out of Zack Ryder, who the fans love. So if it was in front of people, that would be fun and great. Something. Now, here's the crazy thing with that. MJF still isn't really getting pushed to the top, which is weird. Like, I, I get, you. so Moxley beat Jericho and they didn't have Jericho go right after it. And I don't yeah. care about their ranking systems. <laughs> but at that point, Mox is a baby face. Wouldn't, and I know the pandemic happened, and that could be the reason why this hasn't happened. But, like, MJF, if his character is as strong of a heel as it's supposed to be, he would have already found, and he's got a pretty decent record. I think he's never been pinned, and he only lost in a tag match, and he's claiming he's undefeated because he's never been pinned or submitted. He should be facing Mox. I mean, he should be, and I know he's just maybe getting in that bubble now, but yeah. like he should have already been up in that bubble, especially if he beat Cody, where Cody can never compete for that title again. What's MJF waiting for then? It's like he's not competing for it either. So, but maybe this is the summer into the fall. Maybe this is MJF's time. We'll see. Is he? Is it gonna lead? The, see, because here's the thing: is like I know it's like a tried and true trope in wrestling, but man, that that Shawn Michaels Diesel storyline would work great. Uh, with with him and and his goon squad there guy, but I mean his what is his what is that guy's name? Orlo. I can never remember. Yeah, he he's super green, super green. Uh, so someone's gonna have to really work with him, and he'll MJ would have to carry that match. But he's he's a big dude, and I could just see it going that Shawn Michaels Diesel thing, where eventually your bodyguards <laughs> like, dude, no, why am I defending you? I'll just beat you and take that myself. I don't know. I, that's one of my favorite kind of like just angles in wrestling. It's it's classic. It's fun. And I don't know. It always like pulls me into the story whenever that happens. Well, we'll have to stay tuned and see. And like I said, right now, Jericho has been feuding with Orange Cassidy. And yeah. that's just I mean, come on, man. Like I, I get it. <laughs> they want them to build new stars. But like, OK, if you're AEW and you're going to build new stars. Build Brian Cage. Oh, he already passed through in the towel for him already. Yeah. Build. I'm not going to say he's new, but why didn't Archer win the tournament and have Cody chase him? He already lost. Build. Um, who's the other guy I'm thinking of? Luchasaurus, right? Like, well, he's already. Those are guys that look like. That guy. But I'm saying, though, like, but, yeah. they're not like, no, let's put Cassidy, Orange Cassidy against Jericho. And Jericho's still wearing the the stain colored jacket, which is kind of funny. Yeah. He And you, you know, Jericho's really trying to get him over when he's yeah. still wearing that jacket. Because, mm -hmm. you know, thinking it's going to remind everybody week on, week to week that what Orange Cassidy did to Jericho. But I don't know, man. Anything exciting in NXT or anything else that you wanted to talk about? Because I feel content. Rhea um, Ripley bleached her hair. Um, <laughs> she gets that, tattoos. I, they all like wrestlers love getting tattoos, too. Yeah. What was the other thing I saw that was pretty stupid? Oh, um, who's the guy named after the Michael Myers doc? Uh, Dexter Loomis. Uh, he did a flip out of the ring and then teleported 10 feet away from the ring. They did some, they did some quick edits on NXT that I absolutely picked up when I watched it this morning. Uh, he, he does a flip over the ring where he's going to like go like this, 
But then when the camera comes back, he's like over here. <laughs> like it's like he jumped 20 feet out of the ring or whatever. Um, well, Jason and Friday the 13th started teleporting like around seven. That's I don't true. Know if that was just a subtle thing, and they wanted to see if fans picked up on it or just so bad of editing just to cut off, you know, like he didn't climb all the way up there. The answer is yes. <laughs> did, we're going to skip all that scene and he'll just be up there. I, you just went through all those movies, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I still like them as cheesy as they are. Oh, yeah. No, they're fun. They're fun movies. But All right. Well, that's it. So we're going to get this to Noel. We're going to get this to Andre. So awesome. you want to do your one plug? My one plug. I, I am on Twitter at NoDQVice. Give me a follow. Let's talk wrestling. Let's talk really whatever you want. Um, it's a lot of fun to do these shows. And, uh, yeah, follow me and you can get some more stuff. Um, sometimes I'm on NoDQ Reviews uh, doing stuff over there, too. I, I really want I really want COVID to end so we can go back to live wrestling shows because I, I just don't feel like this is, like, a real time right now in wrestling. It feels like it's non-canon. It feels like I'm reading spoilers. It's just – it feels like I'm watching practice. I, I just – I can't get as invested as I used to be in it. But I'm, I'm, I'm making a comeback. I'm watching it a little bit more. But, man, we just need to get those crowds back again because the most depressing thing I've seen this year is Matt Hardy come out to silence. Dude, I like that. It feels like I'm watching practice. By the way, I like your backdrop with all the... Oh, yeah. Is that from, like, one of your systems, one of your hacked systems or your ROMs? Uh, this is just a screen grab I grabbed off of that. But, uh, yeah, I do have all the classic consoles, uh, and each classic console, even the PlayStation, has the entire library installed on it. So it's it's pretty fun. Cool. Well, that's what I'm about to do as we log off. I'm going to go play some more Paper Mario, baby. It's a great so, game. thank you for watching. Make sure you tune in to thebigbeetlebrand.com. Follow Robbie. Follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtue. Go over and check out Andre Corbeil's website, wrestlingwithwrestling.com, and his YouTube channel where he's always battling YouTube because they're doing nasty things to him. But we send him this video anyway. So we appreciate you watching. And, again, go to Twitter if you want to interact with Robbie and I. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>